This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Salem Hemisphere fifth wheel. Um, model number 36, or excuse me, 369BL. Um, so this is a more of a how-to video. I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work, okay? So it has power stabilizers in the back. One switch controls both. Okay. Power awning, two power awnings with LED strip. Okay. Let me just get the, the steps down here. Okay. Sorry about the camera work there. Okay, so storage here with a refrigerator on this side. TV signal plus power plus a bracket. Outside speakers. Okay. This is your solar controller here. Um, it basically tells you uh, how many amps uh, you're gaining from the sun, uh, how much volt, a, the DC voltage in the system, that sort of thing. Just so you know that this right here is a power inverter. So inverter um, starts with DC power, in this case it would be battery, 12 volt DC battery, and it will invert it to 110 AC. This particular inverter runs the refrigerator because you have an AC refrigerator so when you're pulling down the road it's gonna this is gonna be inverting your uh, 12 volt DC batteries up to 110 AC and sending it to your refrigerator meanwhile your tow vehicles uh, alternator will be charging the battery so it's a way to, to keep your uh, battery your AC refrigerator going even when you're not plugged into AC power okay kill switch for the battery um, you can see uh, crank over there and that's your 50 amp power cord uh, is your front compartment with batteries propane is over here two 30 pound tanks On the other side, your 50 amp power cord, your water hookups are here. Uh, you see this to draw the antifreeze in, for example. Your city water hookup, you can fill your fresh water tank here and uh, use the onboard pump to pump the water. This is to bypass your water heater, and uh, you have cable and satellite through. Black tank flush here, so after you dump your black tank, you can leave the valve open. Hook the hose at the dump station on here, and you can you can actually um, uh, spray out your black tank and clean clean it up and, and uh, clean the sensors off also. So, okay, it's pretty self-explanatory. Let me just close this up here. The wind's trying to blow it around. Okay, next to it is your water heater. Looks like um, all uh, tank type water heaters do in RVs. You have a, a, a anode rod slash, slash drain plug that fits right in the hole. That's where you, um, that's, that's obviously how you plug it up. Uh, this rocker switch right here that says on and off, that controls the heating element that's behind this cover here. So keep in mind to turn on the heating element, you want that in the on position. Never run it without water in the tank. Now right now the water heater's empty because it's, it's winterized and bypassed so you never want to run it unless you have water in it. It also runs on a, it also has a gas burner. I'll show you the switches when we get inside the trailer. But um, You take an inch and a sixteen six point socket to uh, put that plug in and out. Okay. It's a furnace vent of course. Here we have some uh, 
a gray vent here, or I mean, I'm a, not vent, a gray tank valve, a black tank valve, and another gray tank valve here. This is where your cord hooks up. Let's unplug it right now. We'll be running out of battery. Uh, you're pre-wired for a backup camera, as you can see up there. Also, you have a ladder which makes it easy to inspect the roof. Manufacturer states every 90 days you should inspect the roof, make sure there's no cracking or separation or no damage to the roof or roofing materials by, um, you know, low branches or road debris, things like that. So, make sure you inspect that. Okay. So, let's see what we've got here. Why does he have that on there right now? Oh, I bet you there's something on the other side. Okay. Well, it's a mystery why he's got that written there. I think there must be something. Let's go look. I've never seen anybody do that before. That's a first for me. We do have a new guy, so maybe. Let's look over here. Huh. No. It's a mystery. Okay. okay. So you have the three switches for the three slide outs. The one next to it is an awning, or the one on the far left is the awning, of course. Okay. This would be the center. Slide out for the center room here. And your kitchen. Okay, so we have two thermostats depending on the zone. They just work like any thermostat. You hit the mode button to light it up, and then you just keep poking it to get through the go through all the different modes and pick out the one you want. Um, your water pump is right here. Um, you use that water pump for pumping water out of the fresh water tank if you don't have city water. Um, if you have city water, you don't have to worry about it. This water pump is also used to winterize the trailer. Um, your water heater on gas is right there. I showed you the electric switch in the lower left-hand corner on the outside. This one's for the gas. You have tank heaters, which extend your camping season. Lights. And, of course, all your levels are here. Show sure, across here. Okay. This, I bet, is the other. Let's look over here. This must be the other awning right here. Yeah, that's the uh, the second awning. Okay. Pantry. Refrigerator. Your range is pretty typical of RV ranges in that. I don't know if you've got the gas turned on here or not, but this is the sparker. Turn clockwise to spark. You have the three knobs here for the three burners, and then that one's for the oven. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, so it's that simple. Okay. Microwave works like any other microwave. This is the the uh, range vent and light. You have a uh, fireplace down here. This would be the remote here. The fireplace works on 110 AC. So, oh, we're not plugged in, that's right. Um, so when it's plugged in, you can change the look of the, the fire, the crystals. Um, it's a really good space heater. It really kicks out the heat. So um, it's uh, on those days where you don't quite need to use your, your LP, your limited supply of LP gas, you can just turn this on. It uses a campground power and uh, take the chill out of it. Your uh, sound, it plays discs, 
you have AM FM radio, you have Bluetooth, USB drive, and uh, uh, different speaker zones. So you can listen outside or inside or both, okay? Your TV, of course, is just, it's, it's, this one has a strap, so make sure you always strap it in place so it doesn't swing around when you're traveling. This is a hide a bed here. The back cushions pull completely off. You, you fold it out, drop the uh, legs, and you got a nice, nice hide a bed. Your um, recliners here. Um, most of the stuff is self-explanatory. Of course, you have a you have a, a, a leaf for this, but make sure you make sure you close it before you bring this light out in. Now down here, this is uh, we talked about a power inverter before, right? Inverting DC to AC. Well, this is a power converter. It does just the opposite. It goes from AC to DC. All trailers have one of these. So. You have regular 110 AC circuit breakers right here, and they're all labeled. So when you're plugged in, that's your distribution center um, for your AC power. Then the power is converted to, to 12 volt DC. Over, down here, you see you got 12 volt fuses, and they're all labeled. So it gets you 12 volt DC. Uh, this is also a battery tenor. So as long as you're plugged in, it's going to send so much energy your battery up front needs, or batteries up front need, and always keep them charged up. So when you're plugged in, uh, to shore power, this this uh, power converter will charge your batteries. When you're when you're to towing down the road, your tow vehicle's alternator will be charging the batteries. And then you have a solar panel that uh, ch charges the batteries as it can, depending on the conditions outside and the time of day and the weather, all that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. So this will be the center bedroom. This obviously folds up and you can pin this up here like this. Alright, so you can sit underneath here. This turns into another bed also. So actually it's kind of a bunk room if you want to use it that way. You got TV hookups. Okay. Very nice trailer. So you have a small loft here. Okay, when it comes to your bathroom, you have a, a nice vent, that's, that's, a, that's a high quality vent for sure, not just a cheap uh, one with a little electric motor in it. You have a good skylight with, uh, um, with over your shower, the, this, this plug here is a GFCI, keep in mind that all the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI. So if you're using a plug outside, let's say, and it pops, it's going to be in here, for example, to reset it. These are the controls for your fan. Um, okay. Your uh, toilet is typical of an RV toilet in that it sits right over a black tank. You have a flush pedal right here. So when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water. Then you're going to put a dose of chemical right in the bowl. Then you'll step on the pedal and hold it down until at least a gallon of water goes into the, the black tank below along with the chemical. And uh, then you're all set to use it. If you don't do that, it'll be it'll get clogged up, it'll smell, it'll just be a bad thing. And uh, so you always want to make sure you use at least a gallon of water and a dose of chemical, okay? Slide room button is here for this little bed slide. You have, it's this is pre-wired and pre-plumbed plumbed for a washer dryer combo or stackable. Okay, so you can always add that in there. All righty, make sure you travel with these latched. These doors latched. Get it in there, that is. I'm going to have to set the camera down to do it. Uh, it's going to take two hands, so we'll do it. And uh, this side also has a latch.
plenty of storage underneath the bed. TV hookups again, as we said. Okay. Let's walk back this way, see if I forgot anything over here. I think we're in good shape, though. This is the carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green. If it's not green, get it serviced. Okay. The chair is strapped down when you're traveling, just so they don't bounce around and break something. You know, hit a window or dent something. Okay. So I think that covers it. I'm looking here. Very nice. So I want to thank, or thank you for purchasing uh, your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, please uh, use your ladder on the back or have somebody go up on the roof to um, inspect it every 90 days or so. It should be part of your regular maintenance just so you can stay ahead of any issues you might have. People generally don't inspect the roof enough, so it's a good thing to do. And right now, like I said, this is winterized, so the water heater is empty and bypassed. There's any freeze in the system. Never run the water heater without water in it. Okay? Thank you very much.